to Ephesians chapter 5, looking at verse 21. And it says, submit. Overflow, there's some noise in uh, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ... So also wives should submit to their husbands. In everything. You know what? You grew up with responsive reading. Let's all read together. Let's read that last part. Verse, verse 24. Come on. We all read it together. Verse 24. Is that Actually, yeah. Verse 24. All right. Come on, now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their own husbands. And the title of my message is What Men Really Want. What men really want. Security, where are you? Where's... Security, we have police. Justin, are there police here? We have police detail. Let them know where I'm at at all times. Father, I pray for my protection. I pray that anyone who wishes to do me any harm, that God, you would stop them in their track because no weapon that can be formed against me will prosper. I pray, God, that you would help me to communicate your word. And I pray, God, that there will be ears to hear and hearts to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say. Everybody say. Push your neighbor and say, I really want to know what men really want. Just tell them I want to know what men really want. Just tell them I, I'm not even going to front. I actually do want to know what men really want. <laughs> Overflow. Stop playing out there. I am what you call a picky eater, which means I am super selective about the food that I choose to eat. I am the type of person that I don't like variety. I like to eat the same things over and over and over again. If I go to a restaurant and I find something good, the next time I go to a restaurant, I want the exact same thing that I had the last time. Now my wife. My wife is the type of person, she goes to a restaurant, I want to try this, I want to see what this tastes like, let's try it. My wife has no problem trying something and it not tasting good, and she said, well, at least I tried it. Not me. I want a good experience every single time. I want to know if the chicken Alfredo was good the last time, it's going to be good this time. And my wife said, why don't you just try something new? No. I don't want to try nothing new. I like what I like. And trying to convince me not to like what I like is kind of messed up. I, I'm just telling you that I like the chicken Alfredo. Let's leave the chicken Alfredo alone. It was good the last time. It's going to be good this time. Let's leave it where it be. And so what happens a lot of times is when you are a picky eater, people are always trying to introduce you to new food. Just try it, man. Just try it. Just try this. Try it. I am a pastor in North Carolina. When I've discovered North Carolina, people cook for their pastors. <laughs> and if you have ever made me something, thank you. God bless you. I'm not against it. But what happens sometimes when people start cooking for you, they want you to taste what they like. You should try my mushroom. Blah, 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 blah. You should try my. Blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, that's so great. But I don't eat that. Yeah, yeah, but I promise you. You may not have liked theirs, but you're going to love mine. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but I don't eat that. I, you know, just, just taste it. And the challenge is when you are a picky eater, it's like people don't want you to like what you like. They want you to like what they like. And it's hard to convince somebody that I'm cool with my taste buds, that 
I'm good. This is what I want. I believe this is the plight of most men when it comes to relationships. Men like what we like. We want what we want. And oftentimes we are met by women who hear what we like and be like, yeah, I wish you didn't like that. <laughs> what you should like is this. Because this is better for you. This will take great. This will be great. And then the man is saying, yeah, but, but I don't want that. I don't like that. Yeah, yeah, but you should, you should grow up and like the right stuff. <laughs> instead of accepting the fact that maybe instead of trying to turn him into me, maybe I should accept what he's trying to communicate about what he wants. I, I was, I, where's the police? Are police here? Please overflow. Where are you? Ask the average woman what she wants in a man. By the way, next week, I'm going to talk about what women really want. I don't just. <laughs> Let's just get that out the way. But that's not what we're talking about today at all. <laughs> Ask the average woman what she wants in a man. And she will sit you down. And she got a list. I like him this height. I want him to be like this. I want him to make this amount. I want his hair to look like this. I want his clothes to be like this. I want him to do this. I want him to do that. I want him to feel like this. I want him to say this. I want him to be like that. Yep, I want this. I want that. I want mm hmm. I, mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> ask the same woman, on average, ask the same woman, what do men want in a woman? Very few can tell you with clarity. Very few women with the same amount of energy that they was talking about what they wanted. They cannot with the same energy and clarity and focus tell you what he want. At first, I thought this was theory, but I said, let me go prove my theory to make it right. So I went to the place where all theories get proven, and that's Instagram. <laughs> so I went on Instagram, I put a post out. I said, ladies... What do you believe men want in a woman? I got over 233 responses. I'm going to tell you some of the things that women said that men want. They said men want someone who will be a mute robot. <laughs> men want shelter, someone they can stay with and use. Men want a provider and a secretary. Men want a maid and a friend with benefits. Men wants a woman who will put up with whatever they dish out, then call it peace and submissiveness. Men want a dummy and a doormat. And then the number one answer was men want a, their mother reincarnated. <laughs> Women are like, what's the problem? I don't, I don't understand. What, what don't you understand about what was said? I mean, what? Sound pretty clear to me. As I'm looking at these responses, I'm realizing there is a disconnect between what women think men want versus what men actually want. Today, I want to talk to wives and future wives. And I want to communicate to you what your husbands and your future husbands are really looking for. Uh, I, I got this from a marriage counselor named Dr. Willard Harley, a marriage counselor named Dr. Willard Harley. And uh, what happened was when he started his marriage counseling, he recognized that all the couples he counseled got divorced. In fact, the more couples he met with, all of them ended in divorce. And in his depression to the results that he was getting, he started to go and do research with other marriage counselors only to find out they had the same results. That all these marriage counselors were doing all this marriage counseling and all the couples who came there wanting a divorce ended up getting one in the first place. And so he said, I got to change my approach. And what he started thinking about is how do I keep couples in romantic love? Because it was romantic love that got them together. How can I keep them there as long as I can? And what he asked them, he started meeting with couples, and he asked them this question. What could your spouse do for you that would make you the happiest? He said, a couple down, and he said, what 
could your spouse do for you that would make you the happiest? And over a course of 10 years, what he realized is he got the same 10 answers. The same 10 answers were the most answers that he got over a course of 10 years counseling married couples. And what he discovered, though, was that the 10 answers he got when he asked them to list them in priority, the top five for women were the top, the lowest five for men. And the top five for men were the lowest five for women. So I got two people that got emotional needs that need to be met. But my needs aren't values for you. And your needs aren't important to me. And so how do I get two people to understand how to meet each other's needs even though it's not as valuable to them as it is to the other person? And so what he discovered was that if people who meet their spouse's emotional needs can stay in romantic love. And he started seeing marriages stay together. In fact, at this point, most marriages who come to him want to get divorced end up staying together. Why? Because he's found a way to get them to meet each other's emotional needs. What is an emotional need? An emotional need is a craving that when satisfied leaves us feeling happy and content. And when it's unsatisfied, we feel unhappy and frustrated. Overflow, write this down. Hear me. An emotional need is a craving that when satisfied leaves us feeling happy and content. And when it's unsatisfied, we feel unhappy and frustrated. Hear me when I say this. I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how much you pray and speak in tongues. If you are with a person that you refuse to meet any of their emotional needs, no matter how spiritual you are, divorce is most likely coming your way. And you can be in your prayer closet all you want. But if I'm not meeting my spouse's emotional need for too long, that's going to end up in us separating, us not being together, and us being separated. Pastor, I came here for some Jesus, and you talking about relationships. Okay, let me give you some Bible. Ephesians chapter 5. I started at verse 21. We read it already. Paul talks to us about mutual submission, which means a Christian relationship is the idea that I am putting someone else's needs above my own. Where's Bible for what I'm talking about? Here's Bible. When it says submit to one another, it's saying put this person's needs, what this person desires above your own. But he don't stop right there. What he says is specifically to wives. He says, wives, submit yourself to your own husbands. Let me say it again. Please be it, overflow. Everybody pay attention. Look, it says, wives, submit to your own husbands. Here's what it does not say. It does not say all women need to submit to every man. Stop saying that. That's what the Bible says. The Bible is not saying you are inferior it don't say every man in your life is real woman. You need to be quiet. Let that man lead. No, it says wives. If you got a man and you love this man and you believe in this man and you married this man, then yes, for your man, my man, my man, my man, you should absolutely <laughs> say, I want to meet your emotional needs, that I'm willing to put your needs above my own. It does not mean women are inferior to men. It just means that I got a man that I love that I want to take care of. Secondly, it says submit yourself to your own husbands, not boyfriends. It don't say submit to your baby daddy. It don't say submit to the, to the, to the hot dude you date. No, husbands. I got to say that because many women are frustrated because you gave husband treatment to boyfriend energy. And now you mad at all men because you gave somebody too much and they deserved. You gave them something that they hadn't put themselves in position to receive. And so because you took a boy and tried to treat him like a man and he didn't rise up to where you thought he should be, now you mad at all men because of what that boy did. When the truth of the matter is you gave too much husband treatment to a dude who told you, I ain't no husband. Push it. I need a lady, find another lady to say, is he talking to you? Because I don't know if he's talking to me, but 
Just find a lady and say, is this, is this you he's talking about? Overflow. Ask somebody, is that you he's talking about? Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. It says husbands, it says submit, it says wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as unto the Lord. Ooh, that's going to mess you up. Ooh, be careful when you read the Bible because you got to read the whole thing. Because when he says wives, submit yourself to your husbands as unto the Lord, what he's saying is wives, you got to meet his needs if he deserve it or not. It didn't say he had to deserve it. Because I'm not doing it for him, I'm doing it for God. And God's my rewarder. And God's going to bless me. And God, and he's going to see Christ in me. Because he know he don't deserve what I'm getting ready to do for him. But it's all good because I know God got me. And that, that's just Christendom as a whole. So you can say, well, I don't want to deal with all that. That's fine, but know that following Jesus absolutely means I treat people better than they, des they deserve. It absolutely means I love my enemy. I do good to them who curse me, that I turn the other cheek. So, so if it's like that in life. In marriage, Jesus saying, wife, stop waiting for him to be good to do something good for him. I know how to quiet a church. It says, <laughs> I'm doing this as unto the Lord because God got me. With that being said, Paul is not talking about Submitting to abuse. If you are with a man, if you are with a husband who hits you and beats you and physically abuses you, the Bible's not asking you to be some martyr and love this guy. No, run for your life. Run for us, run. Get out of that relationship. None of the needs that I'm talking about is about some toxic psycho that you are locked in a house with who's calling you out your name. That is not what we're talking about here. I'm talking about somebody who's in pursuit of God. Not perfect, but someone who's in pursuit of God. Someone who's doing their best. Someone who's based on how they were raised, what they were taught or not taught. They're doing their best to be a husband to you. I'm saying that you got to look past some things and say, hey, even though it don't make a difference whether he deserve it, this is the wife that God is calling me to be. And I got to teach this because we're not giving wives enough props. In a day where Instagram models get more love. So because you twerk online, you are independent and dope. But because you want to take care of your kids and love on your man and make sure your house is good, you corny. No, no, we got to switch that. We got to honor wives and soon to be wives because here's what the Bible says Proverbs 31 verse 30 it says charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised I want to holler at every wife and soon to be wife and say God praises you heaven looks down on you and say don't worry about your Instagram followers you ain't got to take it off for us to give you pride. heaven is cheering for you because now we got women who want to drop off their kids and say, I don't want you no more because, man, I just want to be popular on the gram. I just want to be a TikTok star. And God is saying, no, no, no. What has happened is we've honored the wrong thing. And we praise and put too much value on the thing. So now if I want to be a wife and take care of my man and my kids, somehow I'm corny or somehow I'm not living or somehow I've lost out on fun or I'm boring or I'm old, I'm old fashioned. No, no, I'm in purpose. I know what God called me to do. And for me and my house, we're going to be good and taken care of. So I'm going to give you five things that men really want. Five things that men really want. Overflow, write this down. Police, where are you? Number one, men want sexual fulfillment. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse three and five, or three through four, it says the husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs. Amen. And the wife should fulfill her husband's needs. The wife gives authority over her body to her husband. 
And the husband gives authority over his body to his wife. Hear me, your husband don't just want sex. Your husband needs sex. Your husband needs sex so bad, he don't even understand why he needs it so bad. <laughs> Men don't understand. It, it's not our fault. Puberty happened. Before puberty, we would see a woman and say, ugh. We see a little girl and be like, ugh. But when we were in middle school and puberty hit us, it went from ugh to mm, 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 mm. I don't know why I wanted to push you on the ground last week, but now I just want to hold you in my arms. and kiss. I don't know what happened to me. You don't know how bad men got. You don't know how bad it is. For, for, I mean, you just trying to get dressed, and your husband is staring and drooling, and my God, and you're just, you, you feel ugly and I'm just trying to put on these mismatched socks, and, and your husband's just like, oh, my God. Your husband don't know why you can walk by him, and he's just like, God, God, oh. Some of you come in, y'all go to the gym and sweat, and you come home just ugly and smelly, and your man is just like, my God, I just want to kiss you so bad. And he's just like, no, I, ugh. And he's just like, stop it, oh, God, oh. It's, it's, he's wired like that. God made us like that. He made us like that, and sometimes I got to teach this because if not, you will think your husband's some monster. Oh, he's just nasty. Oh, he's just some lust. But first of all, it's true. He don't just love you. He lusts you. And you should want to be lusted by your man. You should want your man to see you and be, my kids know, they see, my, kid, my wife can't walk past me at my house without my right hand giving her right hand of fellowship. It's the, it's the right hand of fellowship. My kids know. She cannot. I don't even know why. In fact, I'm not, my brain don't even know what I'm doing. I'm literally talking. I'm just like, I just don't know. What am I doing? Why did you do that? Why? He is saying to you, this is a need that I have in my life, and I know that it looks like I'm being insensitive, and like I don't care about you, and it just looks like I just want your body, but I'm telling you, don't demonize me for how he designed me. I am telling you that I look at you, and I just want to, I don't know why, I just see you and lose my mind. Something about your hair, something about your hair, something about your eyes, something about your breath. My God, I just, I, I can't, and, here's what a man is thinking on his wedding day. He's standing before a pastor and he says, do you take her to be your lawfully wedded wife? Do you promise to love and cherish her in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, for richer or for poor, for better or for worse, forsaking all others, keeping yourself only unto her for as long as you both shall live? The man says, I do. When he says, I do, here's what he's thinking. He's thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm about to give all this sexual energy, all to you, girl. This, I'm forsaking all others. I'm saying no to every other woman. So you getting all, all this is about to be all yours. You are the only one I want. Oh, I'm about to, this is all you. And men are shocked after we get married. To find out that you weren't thinking the same thing we were thinking. <laughs> Men are shocked when we find out that it's not as big a deal to you as it is. We, we feel like we're going to die without this. You can go a week, you can go three days without doing what? <laughs> and what ends up happening is now he's in a marriage that's sexless. And then he goes out into the street, and he's talking to his friends, his single friends, and if they're not all the way saved, they telling him everything. Dude, I just had homegirl over here. She just did this. Yo, you couldn't believe what Susan just did. Yo, Amy came over here. Just Tasha came over here. Just Lisa then walked over here. Just, and he's sitting here thinking, man, you getting all that? And I'm not giving nothing. 
Then he goes to work, and he got some girls in there flirting with him. And here we go, say, you better have self-control because a real man has self-control. Absolutely. Should a man have self-control? Without question. Men, absolutely. We need self-control. But why starve us and then send us to go get some groceries? As some type of cruel test of our Christianity and our manhood. Yeah, let me starve you and see if you can go through groceries and not touch that. That's, that's, that's a little cruel to, to think that way. And then if he's, he can't get none from the street, he can't get none from his house, so now he's got his phone. And the only thing he can do is look at some pictures and some videos, and now he's, he's a creep, and you nasty, and you disgusting, and you sick. And he's just trying to figure out, God, what I'm supposed to do? Because I got married thinking that this need would be fulfilled, and it's not. And so now I can't get it from the street, can't get it from my phone, I'm a sick pervert, when really all it is I got a need that I'm hoping that my wife can fulfill. And he's looking and saying, God, can you help me? Can somebody help me? Hear me, hear me. I used to, I'm going, I'm going, baby, I'm going to put some of our business in the street if that's, if that's okay. Because I never want people to think we're just beating the people up and we, not, we don't live where, where they at. And so we've had, we've been married 16 years. So in 16 years, we've had seasons where we can't keep our hands off each other. But then we had seasons where we both were working two jobs. Then we had seasons where, by the way, I get up early, she stay up late. So when I'm, I'm in the morning time, I'm at my peak of energy. She's looking at me like, if you don't get away from me. <laughs> Nighttime, I crash, and she's like, come on. And I'm like, I'm tired. I'm, it's, you should have hit me this morning. <laughs> So we, we've had to figure it out. And so we've had seasons where it's been great. We had seasons where it's been low. We had seasons where we felt like we was doing everything we were supposed to do. We had, we've had every kind of season that you can think of and what we've had to come to an understanding of. When I was young and immature, I would say that my wife wasn't as sexual as me. When I was young and immature, I'd say, see, I talked to my pastor, I talked to my counselor. See, she, she just ain't sexual with me. But now that I'm mature, I've been in the game a long time now, I realize she's just as sexual as me. The problem is what it takes me to get there is different than what it takes to get her there. For me to get there, all she got to do is breathe. Just breathe in and out. Just keep breathing. <laughs> just breathe and put on chapstick, and I'm good. I'm For my wife, she needs some conversation, attentiveness, connection, some kindness, consideration of her needs. She needs me to look into her eyes. She needs me to be genuine and vulnerable. She needs that masculine energy mixed with that tender loving care. And then she gets there. Here's the problem. It takes me three seconds. It takes her a whole day. So part of the reason there's this disconnect between us and you thinking, man, maybe we are both off. It's because what I need is quick, what you need takes long. And so wives, if you are trying to fulfill this need in your husband's life, part of the way you can do that is sit him down and say, look, I know you have this need in your life, and I want to be the one to fulfill it, but here's what I'm going to need. If you really want me to participate and not be some martyr where I give you my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, if you, if you, if you want me in this, hey, you're going to have to tell us because we, again, we're so distracted by how good you look, that sometimes we forget what you need. And so you got to just tell you, I want to fulfill this need, but I'm just telling you, here's what it needs, here's what, and you got to remind us, write it down, send an email, send a text, and then repeat it three times, and then we start catching on. But what we can't do is we just can't go without this need being met. Now, if you're a single woman in this room, and you're saying, all right, pastor, last week you told me don't have sex, but then this week you told me that it's a need that a man has. What do I do? Here's what you do, overflow. Here, if you are single in this room and do not have sex with a man in order to convince him that he needs to marry you. No, don't do that. He just needs to know that you got him afterwards. Which means you got to communicate to your man. 
hey, we're not having sex, but don't get it twisted. I, put a ring on my finger. Your cup will be overflowing. <laughs> From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, you'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come in, blessed when you go out, blessed when you, you're going to be blessed. Try me. Just tell them. Don't even get it twisted. Just go ahead and marry me. I promise you. You will not be ready for the overflow that's going to come into your life. He, because what a man is afraid of, he's afraid if I marry one of these Christian women that they make me feel so bad about my sexual desires that after I marry them, I'm not going to get none. I heard about what happened and so and so and so. I heard about, I'm, ladies, I'm just trying to key you into what they're thinking. Man, I heard about a bunch of husbands who are so unhappy that I'm not trying to join in with the unhappy crew. And you need to look at them and say, you better stop listening to those statistics. You are not dealing with one of them. You're dealing with one of me. And one of me got you when we get married. And if you tell him well enough, he'll speed it up. All right, here we go. <laughs> Don't put that on YouTube. Don't put that. Number two, a man wants recreational companionship. Recreational companionship. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 15. So I recommend having fun. Because there's nothing better for people in this world than to eat, drink, and enjoy life. That way they will experience some happiness along with all the hard work God gives them under the sun. Hear me, your husband and your future husband, they don't just want you to be their wife. They want you to be their best friend. Men want a homie, man. Men want... That's my dog, man. Men want, she rocks, she got this with me. Men want someone that they can have recreational companionship. Hear me, what it means is that your husband, you got to understand, he likes hunting, he likes fishing, he likes playing pool, he likes watching football, he likes jumping out of planes, he likes hiking, he likes, go, he, he, just, he just wants to do something out somewhere. And you got to be careful, wife. Letting the only time your husband has fun is with his boys. Because you are training him that fun happens when you leave the house. Where what you want is, no, we can have some fun together. I promise you, I don't just love my wife. I don't just lust my wife. I like my wife. We hang out. My wife, when I was, I'm in the LeBron James. When LeBron's on TV, she watching with me. She, she, she watching. Now, she's talking about stuff I ain't talking about. She's talking about his hairline and the bald head, and that's not what I'm talking about. But, but we used to watch Miami Heat games, and when he was in Cleveland, we celebrated together. And when I'm sitting there watching the Patriots, or we were watching whatever football team, she in there. She's like, let's go. Let's do this. We both putting on the jersey. I am telling your husband, I, I dare you to say, baby, let's go fish. I know you love fishing. Let's get out there and go fishing. And it don't matter if you don't like this. Baby, let's go. He's going to be like, what? You want to go fishing? Yeah, I want to go fishing. You want to go hunting? Come on. Bang, I'm ready to go shoot something. He's going to be like, what? 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 You want to hang out with me? You want to? I'm going to get in some trouble because this is one of my pet peeves. And so if I sound a little frustrated because I go in this conversation all the time, because it drives me crazy because oftentimes a, 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 a man gets judged because he don't pursue someone. And you say, well, these men don't want to pursue. Yeah, but how can I pursue someone who don't show any interest in anything I care about? So you only want me to pursue as long as we're doing what you like. So you want me to watch the notebook all day. But if I put on some guns and some shooting and people are dying, you don't want to do that. And I'm saying, hey, you, oh, God. Most women, I'm not talking about everybody, but there are a lot of women today who, when they're trying to get a man, it's like I'm going to impress him with my degrees. I'm going to impress him with the salary I make. Because men are asking you now, what do you bring to the table? And so one of the things you said I got to bring to the table is I got to bring a high salary. I got to bring this, I got to bring that. I promise you, shock, shock a man, shock a man. I dare you to say to your man, so I was, find out who his favorite player is. Mine's LeBron, so I'm going to use LeBron. 
I dare you to just roll up on your man and say, you know, I was, I was looking at LeBron's stats from 2003, and I realized that he was only averaging 23 points a game then. But then it seemed like year 10, it seemed like he really came up, and I'm seeing the rebounds are getting a little bit more crazy than they've ever been. And so now year 20, what do you think, babe? What do you think? Is his shot where it needs to be? How many more years do you think he's going to play? You think he's going to play with his son? I promise you, your man will be sitting there saying, who are you? What? Where did you come from? What? And if you're sitting there thinking, well, I'm not going to do all that. Well, I got to do all that. What trips me out is that a woman will spend more time doing research on a degree she's not even going to use. But a man she says she want to spend the rest of her life on, she won't do no research. So you did all this studying for a PhD, but you won't do no studying for an MEN. And I'm trying to understand how you say I want to spend the rest of my life with you, but I can study for a paper, but I won't study for my purpose and my partner? Ain't nobody got time to do all that research. Yes, you do. That's why you got five degrees. You do research well. So how is it you done did research on, on all this chemistry and biology and all this? You done studied, you done studied human resources and human services. And, but when it comes to your man, you won't find out what fish he like? Don't ask God to give you something that you won't research. Because he's thinking, hey, can I just, see, see, we got in this debate when it came to women about should we take you to Cheesecake Factory? Should we take you, I, woman, I dare you, I double dog dare you. Go look at your man and say, hey, let's go to Buffalo Wild Wings tonight. Let's watch the UFC fight. I just want to see people fighting. He's he going to be like, what? Are you serious? You want to see the fight? Yeah, I want to see the fight. I know you want to see the fight. Let's go see the fight. Let's just go to Dave and Buster's and see the fight. Y'all arguing about Cheesecake Factory. Meanwhile... See, see, okay, this is how overflow, this is how women will look at another woman and say, you, you will see a guy who will cheat on his woman with someone else, and you look at the other woman, and you're like, ew, you cheated with that? You did that? Yeah, because while his woman was somewhere praying, the other woman was on a basketball court, just like, yeah, man, you know. <laughs> I just love me some ball, just... And he's out there just dribbling and just playing ball. You in the house praying. Meanwhile, somebody's with your man just, just dribbling and just like, come on, let's do, come on. And then he fall into his lap just like, you caught me. <laughs> I'm telling you, you got to be his best friend. Which means you got to start saying, what activities can we do together? Come on, I can't just let you golf by yourself all the time. I got to get out there. I got to do my best. I got to try. Because I want to make sure we're doing activities together. And the most activities you can do that you both like, the best. Is it good so far? Y'all getting some of this? Over for you getting some of this? All right, because it's going to get worse from here. Number three. He wants physical attractiveness. I know how to quiet a church. Your husband wants to look at you and be like, wow. Your husband wants to look at you and be like, whoa. Oh, you look good. Your husband wants to see you and just say, my God, my God. Come on, coming to America, there's a God somewhere. Your husband wants to look at you and say, look at what the Lord has done. Mighty are his works. Great are his creation. Hey, mind you, this is the same guy that buys a car and washes it ten times a day. Drives it for no reason, just so that people can see him in his new car. Because nothing make a man feel better than driving his car and everybody looking out, oh, that's your car, that's mine, yeah. <laughs> a man wants a reward and a trophy for anything. Just give me a trophy. Why? He takes a trophy. It could be for walking fast. Don't even make a difference. He'll put it up in his house, put a light on it, put it on a shelf, built the shelf, bought a shelf for a trophy so you can walk in and say, man, you did the Yeah, that's me. This is the same man. Bang. We'll just go kill something hunting, cut his head off, put it on his wall so you can walk in. He can say, look what I've done. 
a man absolutely wants to walk around with his wife and be like, that's me. My wife, I'm going to pick on her. She's, she's so classy. I got one of the classiest wives ever. And so my wife, she's just been classy since the day I met her. And so she'll come out and she'll be like, sweetie, should I wear this? Because I think it's showing her too much. And I'm like, girl, show it. What are you, <laughs> what are you talking about? I just think it shows my legs. Yes. <laughs> so you just want everybody to see this? Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely want a guy to look at you and be like, is that you, bitch? Good girl. I'm like, yeah. I'm just telling you, physical attractiveness simply means that I am my best self more often than I'm not. It means that I do the best with what I got. This is not a conversation about lose weight. I don't need everybody going to the gym trying to get skinny because every man don't want that. Stop it. Yeah, some men who do not, no, don't, no, no. I'm going to tell you what men really want. What a man is thinking is I want you to be as close to the way you were when I married you as possible. Because that I loved. That's what I signed up for. And so what I'm saying to you is that what he's, this is not about you. Here, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a good way to figure this out. Because some women are like, I don't know what, I don't, here's a good way. Ask, this is a great conversation. Just ask him, hey, what do I wear that you like? Ask your husband, what do you like seeing me in? What color do you like my hair being? Which, you're, you, you'll be surprised what he might say. Because what he's really thinking when it comes to physical attractiveness is, do you even care what I like? And it's a sad day when women will dress better for Instagram. For a picture with your girlies than you would for the guy who's giving his life to you and saying, I want to marry you and I want to be with you forever, but uh, he just wants to see me and I'm not trying to do that. I don't like my hair like that. But he's like, come on, this is, man, I'm trying to look at you and look at you only. <sighs> By the way, just in case you're saying men need to grow up and be more like the men in the Bible because men, God, would never be like this. I got a scripture, Genesis chapter 29, Verse 16 through 18. Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah had weak eyes. I don't know what that means, but it don't sound good. But Rachel had a lovely figure. What kind of figure you got to have for the Bible, for the Holy Spirit, to put it in Moses, to write that she had a lovely figure and was beautiful. Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, I will work for you seven years in return for your younger daughter. Jacob said she looks so good. She's worth seven years of work. And by the way, you should want your man to look at you like that. You should want your man to lust you and look at you and just say, my God. You know why this is so hard for women? Ah! Can I tell you why this is so hard for women? Because women have the ability to look past a man's looks and see his heart. Women have the ability to say, I know he don't look right. I know he's not the best. I know it, but he's got the best heart you've ever seen. He is the sweetest man I've ever met. And oftentimes women want men to be able to be able to do the same thing. Why can't you see my heart? See, OMG, I'm about to help somebody. This is so good. What time is it? Okay. When a wife, when you meet a woman and she dresses up for you and she's so beautiful, right? And then you marry her and all of a sudden she don't dress like she used to dress for you. It's not because she's evil. It's because she's thinking that you wanted her. Because <laughs> you, you have me now. Because you really wanted me because she wants you. And he's like, yeah, but what I wanted was the image that you showed me. I'm getting in trouble which is why it's cruel for you to look so different than your profile pic. <laughs> Be 
because I saw your profile pic and fell in love. Asked you out on a date and someone else showed up. And I'm like, that is not the picture that I saw. Because you're thinking he should want me. He should want my heart. He should want my character. He should want who I am as a person. And I'm telling you, no, he is stimulated by what he sees. And he liked what he saw when he saw it. That's why he picked it, because he liked it. And now all of a sudden, what he liked, he don't see no more. <laughs> police! Where's the police detail? Oh, my goodness. Let me get out of here. Overflow. Don't leave yet. All right. The fourth thing that he wants is a peaceful home. <laughs> Who pray for? Is somebody praying for me? Are y'all praying for me? Proverbs chapter 31, verse 27, 28. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. I'm going to tell you what your man fantasized about before he got married. I'm going to tell you. Everybody listen to what I'm about to say. Overflow. Check this out. When your man got married, here's what he was thinking. Ladies, do not laugh. Ladies, do not laugh. A man was fantasizing that when he got married, he'd have a long day at work, and he'd come home to a loving wife, greeting him at the door with a kiss and a hug. His well-behaved children are so glad to see him and call him dad. <laughs> he enters the comfort of a well-maintained home that is nice and clean. His wife says, sweetie, relax. Dinner is almost ready. He can smell the food from the kitchen and the aroma filling the house. The family starts eating dinner together. The kids then wash the dishes. They go to bed quietly with no hassle or no fuss. He then gets his wife to watch some TV with him. Then they make passionate love and go to bed in blissful peace. <laughs> can I get a man and say amen? Amen. I got a wife saying the devil is a lie. That, was a lie. <laughs> the devil. that is what he was thinking. Should men do more chores? Yes. Do men need to do more around the house? Yes. Do men need to help with the kids? Yes. We're not arguing that. What I'm arguing is, is this a real need in his life? And I am telling you, it is a real need in his life. Pastor, why do men need this? Because... For most men, their life and their mind is so chaotic. They got so much on their mind that their home is the one place they're supposed to get some peace from. The one place he's supposed to be able to find peace is in his house. And it is crazy that a man's got to go all in the street because he's scared to go home. Because there's more chaos in his house than it is anywhere else. And so... My wife and I, here's, here's what we've done. Just give you just some, some, what we've done. And my wife is one of the best cooks I know. My wife is one of the best homemakers. My wife was raised by an old school mom who just didn't play no games. You're going to wash. You're going you to clean up. You're going to do. So my wife does it all. But as we've, as we've gotten older and life has gotten more complicated, we have just decided, hey, here's one of the things you can do is just ask your husband, hey, what's the one thing that I can do in this house that makes you feel the most loved? If it's a cooked meal, all right, got it, I can do that. Or if it's a, hey, I just, dishes for me is a thing, all right. What's the one thing, I'm not going to just do everything, but what's the one thing I can do that can put the biggest smile on your face? Outside of that, we kind of outsource almost everything. At this point in our lives, my wife, she likes the lawn mode. I'm sorry, I'm preaching all day Sunday to make me spend all day Saturday out in the lawn trying to. I went outside one day. I saw somebody mowing a lawn at my neighbor's lawn. I went over there. I said, hey, can you mow this lawn on Fridays? How, how much do you charge? We looked at our budget. I said, that worked. Can you just mow the lawn? We don't really care who do it. It's just one, We just know it needs to get done. At this point, I don't care who cooked. I just want food. I don't really care where it came from. I don't. 
I, but there was a time where I was like, babe, you cook. Now I'm like, I don't care. Beaver chicken, let's just do it. As long as it's there, I don't care. I'm going to eat it. It's, it don't. And so at this point, my wife is like, look, I can clean, but trying to make me clean this whole house every week, that's not going to happen. So we, we went on Facebook and asked some people, do y'all know any cleaning companies or anybody? We found this group of ladies who clean your house for a cheap price and work for our budget. And so they come once a quarter, they clean up the house, and I don't care. I don't, I don't care who do it. it just, it's a need that's getting fulfilled. For us, we, we got to take care of the kids. We, we fly her mother up at least three times a year. Please stay for two months. These are your kids for two months. They just, they're your kids. Just do whatever you want to do with them. And we just have mama in there, and we just be having fun. It's a need that's getting met. It don't make a difference who meet it. It just matters that we talking about it. So this is not a, me saying you got to make him a sandwich. You got to make him a sandwich. By the way, though, if the idea of making your husband a sandwich disgusts you, please don't get married. Just don't get married. You just don't, you don't care about him that much. If making a husband a sandwich disgusts you that much, you don't like him that much. You don't love him that much. So don't marry somebody you, that making a sandwich makes you feel like a slave. Just, just, just don't do it. <laughs> just don't do it. All right? Okay. Here's my, here's my last one. Here's my last one. My last one is this. The last thing he needs he needs admiration and appreciation. Proverbs 16, verse 24. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Do you know what your man wants from you? Genuine admiration and appreciation. Men are motivated by honest admiration. There is something about you telling him he's your hero that moves him. There is something about you Telling him he the best, he the greatest, he's a king. That moves him. It moves a man so much that they put cheerleaders at these games so that a dude who's working hard on the court, they know scientifically when he goes back to the bench and there's some women there saying, you're the best, you're the best, you're the best. It motivates him to get back in the game and keep going. And what he wants is to come home and you say, you're the best, you're the best, you're the best. He's going to go out there and kill some more stuff. And maybe he's not killing anything because he comes home and he's getting drained and not getting poured back into with some admiration. See, I want to dispel this myth that men don't want a strong woman. He don't want no strong woman. Men just want a woman who could just do. No, 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 no. It's not that we don't want no strong woman. At this point, make more than me, please. I hope you do. Go ahead. Make all the salary that you want to make. It would be a blessing. Go ahead. It's not that you're stronger than me or you too strong for me. It's I never feel appreciated when I'm around you. You make me feel small when we're together. You make me feel small about the salary I bring into this house. You make me feel small. You, you, I'm shrinking because in here, you make me feel like I'm not enough. So it's not that you're too strong for me. It's that I don't feel appreciated or admired by you. And for every woman with a high salary and 10 degrees and you got it all together and you don't need nobody, the question is, do you have the ability to say, hey, even though I make more than you, believe me, you bring something into my life that I value, that I appreciate, and I admire the way you take care of our kids, and I admire what you do for a living, and I admire what you, and I admire seeing you worship, and I appreciate the fact that you bring us to church every week. I love that about you. He just wants to feel appreciated. It ain't got nothing to do with you too strong. It has something to do with how I feel when I'm around you. What you say, believe me, when I get off this stage, my, my wife, got, she got to tell me how I did. I'm looking, hey, was that message cool? Was that good? Was that message, you like that? Because if she liked it, I'm good. That does something to your man. That does something to me. He wants some appreciation. This is another reason why a woman will, a man, a woman will see a man with a woman. You're like, why her? Why? Uh, uh. Can't believe you, cause she be praising him, and she be telling him how great he is. And it's hard when you with somebody who can't, who don't ever, never anything you produce. And then you go somewhere else, and they just praise you like crazy. It messes with your head. It messes with your mind. And I'm telling you that God wants us in a space where your husband can come to you and say, hey, I get the greatest approval when I get it from my wife. 
Was that good, everybody? You guys play. Let me pray for you. If you're in this room and you just heard this message, if you're in overflow, hear me when I say this. You can't accomplish what I just said without God. You can't accomplish this without the Holy Spirit. Do not try to do this in your own strength. What you need to declare right now before you leave this room is I'm going to make Jesus the Lord of my life. And I'm going to allow him to give me the strength to be the wife and the husband that he's called me to be. But it starts with making him Lord. Let's all pray together. Say, Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for me. I give you my life. I give you my purpose. I give you my plan. Come into my heart. Save me now. I am yours and you are mine. In Jesus' name, let everybody say. Let everybody say. Come on, can you put your hands together for every person?